show live from the nation's capital. I'm your host, Ken McClinton. Uh, I hope that you've enjoyed this evening. It's been a, a, a rock-shedding moment for a lot of people who tune in. Uh, I guarantee you the next two weeks, when it's just me flying solo, you're going to hear a lot of rawness. Hopefully you'll be able to get over it, get near it, uh, get to it, get through it. However way you got to get, get it. Uh, <laughs> I'm so excited this particular evening because my friend Dave Milner is about to grace me with his presence. Uh, he is Mr. Vacay in the area of conservative talk and media. There is none other that takes a vacay as often as Dave Milner does. Uh, and I, that, uh, that on record from BZ, from SHR Media. Uh, Dave Milner is a conservative commentator there at SHR Media with his great show, Unpleasant Blind Guy. He's also on Blog Talk Radio uh, with his wonderful program, English Defense League, which you can see and hear. Forgive me, you can hear on Blog Talk Radio uh, at 3.30 on Thursdays afternoons and 3.30 on Sunday. I don't know if uh, Dave will be there this Sunday. He is uh, vacating. Uh, are, are you going to be there, sir? And a greeting to you, Ken, and to everyone else. Actually, we have decided to take off for vacay. Jeff is visiting family in the south of England right now, and I pray for him, uh, his well-being in his travels. And we will be back on the 6th of September for a Sunday show at our normal time and I will be back with you on the 10th of September at the usual time. All you need to tell me in the meantime is which helipad on my luxury yacht you wish me to have cleared because I don't know which of your helicopters you're going to want to bring in if you want to, you and Mrs. Biggs want to come and visit me. Well, um, I the, the large one or the small one? I'm going to take the smaller one now because I believe in climate change now. <laughs> hey, hey. All right, then. I will have that one, that helipad cleared, cleared for you. Yeah. Um, nah, nah, I, I don't want people to get the wrong impression. Yeah, you know, unlike BZ, who has a nice mountain retreat, unlike <laughs> yourself, who has a wonderful wife and family or anything, the only thing that keeps my sanity is to take some time off and turn off the politics. Yeah. The family can get hold of me in case of emergencies and whatnot, of course. But as far as social media and politics and the nonsense go, three times a year I have to shut it off because if I don't, I'll just go away and I won't come back. And you know and I know that this upcoming election season is going to be grueling to say the least. I'm not going to say what I call it in the chat room with you don't want that on your show, but mm. it's going to be that and more. Exactly. I don't expect, well, anyone who, who thinks on election night that there's going to be anything happening more than media declaring a winner, which may or may not be right, um, is fooling themselves. It's going to be a hot mess. It's going to be a dumpster fire and an avatar. Yeah, I, I got to ask you uh, here, Dave, because your insights are just brilliant. And you're benevolent to share them with us every Thursday night at 10, 20 p.m. Um, but is it Barack Obama running for president or is it Joe Biden? Because according to his speech last night, I could have sworn 
Barack Obama was running for office. He's mentioned himself 35 times. And he mentioned Joe, I think, like four or five at the very most. Uh, and and well, who's running? Well, remember, this is Obama. I, I mean, this yeah. guy <laughs> loves him some him. <laughs> he, he, he just can't get away from his own um, self-adoration. Uh, he is his own idol, really, I mm -hmm. think. And, you know, he understands that he can't be president again. Well, unless, of course, Joe Biden gets elected and six months later Kamala Harris takes over and somehow they get hold of all of the Congress and they scare the Supreme Court into allowing someone to take a third term as president. But all of that not happening yet he knows that he's he's not going to right but uh, no he can't he can't resist talking about himself and and his and his awesomeness that is in his own mind he cannot resist that and i'll tell you people should stop thinking about a joe biden presidency this is really going to be a Kamala Harris presidency if they win. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, it, she will be at the top, and people need to understand one thing about her. Um, she she has said something that just you know uh, set a chill up my spine, uh, not a thrill up my leg, a chill up my spine. Wow. She said. She said that she believes that behavior should be managed. And, of course, she was talking about people's diets when she said it. But you could tell in her voice that she wants it to be more than that. Mm -hmm. And I want to tell the people who are watching right now, who are listening right now, when the left tells you things like this, believe them. Yes. Okay. President Obama said he wanted to fundamentally transform America before he got elected, and that's almost happened. Kamala Harris says that she wants to manage behavior. Believe them when they say these things, because like Mohammedans, they will tell you ahead of time what they're going to do. And what that means for people who are voting, what that means and even for people who are considering not voting, all right, is that she wants to manage your behavior from cradle to grave, like I've been saying for the past 25 years. It's strange, Ken, the left always says that government should stay out of our bedrooms. Well, Kamala Harris wants to get in your bedroom and <laughs> get, in, get in your living room and get in your kitchen and get in your bathroom and, 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 and get in your spare room where, where you keep all the junk. She wants to get in your business. She wants to define what your business is. Exactly. Right. You know, and with I, with, I, with a nickname like Mattress, uh, mm -hmm. you can tell uh, she doesn't find any space inconvenient to get into. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Uh, she wants to get into all of your business. Uh, Kamala Harris is a sincere threat uh, because she tries to play both ends uh, and uses her beauty to cover up her Marxist ways. Uh, but I want to ask you about Joe Biden tonight um, because Joe Biden is seen as the individual uh, who, in fact, he's supposed to be giving his speech right about here, and hopefully he hasn't fallen asleep in the middle of it. Um, but he is supposed to be the one to bring America together. Uh, he is to be the one who is to repair the democracy destroyed by Donald Trump's presidency. I wanted to get your thoughts regarding Joe Biden and whether those uh, certain expectations are fair, just, and true. Well, first of all, I don't expect, uh, just a moment, I don't expect that his speech tonight will be live. I mean, any honestly, anybody that thinks that it is, is probably fooling themselves. 
Okay. He doesn't, as far as expectations that Joe Biden has, I'm sure that those are being managed for him at mm -hmm. this point. The His handlers are telling him he's going to be in charge of all of this. But that's obviously not going to be the case once he gets to the White House. I mean, this man not only ha has trouble remembering things, but he has trouble finding finding his car that he has to ride in yeah. to events and things of that nature. It, it really is a sad case of elder abuse for them to try and wedge him in there uh, just long enough so that someone else can take over. Uh, and the thing is, Joe Biden, his expectations, no one really knows at this point what represents his true thinking because he'll say anything to get into power. Mm -hmm. This guy's been running for president since the 1980s. And mm -hmm. he's so close now that he can taste it. But the problem is that he's very close also to being what in what could wind up being his own private hell because he could wind up winning the presidency and not having any of the power. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Uh, Rasmussen today released uh, a poll. And you know I'm not a big fan of polls. I, I really believe the only poll that matters is what happens at the electoral box. Uh, but they released a poll today. And you know we have Renard Jackson on Tuesday night here who said that in order for it no longer to be a safe race for Biden, uh, Donald Trump would have to be within three or four points of him and that would require uh, Joe Biden to get out of the basement and have to campaign, which would create issues and concerns for him while he does so. Rasmussen released yesterday a poll that stated that since the DNC convention has been going on, jo um, Donald Trump's enthusiasm uh, ratings have jumped from 44% to 51 percent. Literally, Donald J. Trump, because the DNC held a convention, is now ahead of the Democrats. What say you, sir? Well, it's not surprising. From uh, everything I've heard, it was, uh, it and is, their convention is kind of a kind of a joke almost. It's not a real convention. I don't think people see it as a convention they've been losing in the ratings I don't know they might have been a bit higher tonight because tonight's supposed to be their big night with their big uh, acceptance speech and all of that stuff from yeah. Joe Biden yeah I also heard that they were going to make sure that all the prisoners came out of their cells so they would be able to watch kind of like uh, that movie uh, with uh, Burt Reynolds uh, <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Yeah. <laughs> well, they'd almost, they'd almost have to have that. It's certainly, it's certainly they'll be passing out ballots to those prisoners, so we, we, we know that. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's really amazing, and this has been happening for the past few days, actually. There is, people are planning on voting, uh, Democrats here. This is uh, what, what some other polls are saying. Democrats are planning on voting for Biden, not because they're enthusiastic about him, but because they hate President Trump. Mm -hmm. On the other side, people who plan to support President Trump are more enthusiastic about him, uh, you know, than uh, than they than they hate Biden or dislike Biden. Yeah. Okay. So there, there's definitely an enthusiasm gap going here. And the Democrats, I think, were hoping that Kamala Harris would close that gap. But as you heard some of those college kids say, they may well, some of them may well stay home. Yes. There were Bernie 2020 people and Kamala Harris was a DA. And a horrible DA, too. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, that, and, and, and a horrible AD. That could really uh, affect that ticket, the viability 
of that ticket. I can, uh, if if certain things happen, this it, it could well be a horse race at this point. Mm -hmm. Now, in, in the sense of turning the page, uh, and there are threatening stories coming out of CNN about Texas turning blue and. Arizona turning blue, uh, that Donald Trump won't win Wisconsin or Michigan or even Ohio, uh, and certainly not Pennsylvania, that, that, and that virtually makes it impossible for him to win. Um, is America ready to let go of liberty and freedom and embrace unmasked Marxism? Well, I think people love free stuff. Okay, yeah, that that they do love. However, they also love security. They also love knowing that they can walk down a street or drive down a street and not be faced with a mob that's going to pull them out of their car, beat the crap out of them, rob them, and then steal their car. Yeah. Okay. I think that the desire for free stuff that the left has been working on people to. Uh, to embrace is going to be overshadowed by their fear of the mob, which the left still is not stopping. In fact, I'm sure you heard the other day that uh, that Presley said, oh, the unrest in the streets has to continue. And as far as we know, tonight, for instance, it's still going on in Portland. Portland, yeah. Yeah. Um, and Seattle. And Seattle, there yeah. you go. Yeah. And as long as as these things keep coming out and more and more people keep seeing them, CNN can say whatever they want. All right, but it really does seem that a lot of truths are beginning to trickle into a lot of places where they don't want them to trickle into, and that you know, could spell a groundswell of support later for President Trump. Now, Mary said something in the chat. Yes. I want to address. Yes. All right, and, and she was talking about the October surprise. If you remember, Kim, when I had you on my show in 2018, I said that I believe that what the left is going to do, and this is going to sound really radical, what the left is going to do is they're going to off one of their own and try and blame the right for and it's going to be someone significant. It won't be Biden or Harris. Yeah. Okay. But it could be someone like an AOC or something of that nature. We have been up to our necks in the blood of supposed, uh, in many cases, Wuhan virus uh, uh, victims. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it's going to take someone significant, all right, in order to inflame people and get them angry. So that I still say that's coming up. Also, remember what you and I spoke about a few months back. There is still the trial of those policemen. Yep. All right, from Minneapolis, and guaranteed that's gonna you're gonna get a verdict on that in October, and that could actually be a bad thing for Democrats. Okay. Mm -hmm. The first thing could be a good thing for Democrats if they can fool people long enough to think that some horrible writing killed one of their own. Yeah. All right. The second thing could be a bad thing for Democrats because if you and I are correct and these policemen get a walk, police officers, excuse me, the number all men, if they get a walk, mm -hmm. there are going to be huge riots and people are getting tired of that. They're getting tired of that to the point where a Democrat congresswoman today was warning Democrats that this is increasingly not a good look and not a good thing for the Democrat Party, especially since these rights are happening in Democrat-controlled areas. Exactly. And I want to I piggyback in terms of that um, with you. Uh, Lori Lightfoot has implemented uh, a Jim Crow style of protection in Chicago. You see, the Miracle Mile there in Chicago doesn't receive the same protection as her street. She has made it 
affirmed this particular week that protesters will not be allowed to come on her street because she will have police protection uh, and that the necess necessity of that is city security. She's important and thus deserves the protection of the police so that no press protesters come that way. However, the rest of Chicago could go to virtually hell. Uh, I, is that message finally getting through to Americans, maybe in the inner city, maybe in the suburbs, that the Democrats have no real interest in their protection at all? Well, this is the same mayor, let's remember, who went out to get herself a haircut because image during the <laughs> worst of the Wuhan outbreak in Illinois, all right, and of course no one else could go out and get a haircut or go out to church or whatever, okay, this is, this is privilege showing itself. And, Thank you. And it is just as true of her own security measures, which I don't know why Chicago PD is actually protecting her, and, you know, I, I would... I would actually giggle with delight if one night the Chicago, the, her security detail just said, uh, nah, nah, me ain't coming to work. There you go. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but that's another thing, kid. In so many of these Democrat-controlled areas, all right, you showed an awesome video before by a, a, uh, by a congressional candidate. Kimberly Clayson. All right. Yep. Yes, yes. That young lady pointed out something that I think more and more people in the inner cities are beginning to clue in on, okay, and that is that not only are they being betrayed by these Democrats that they voted for, year, for, for years, but these Democrats are acting like a bunch of let-them-eat-cake monarchs mm -hmm. and saying, forget the people, I'm going to get mine. You guys can suffer with the Wuhan and suffer with the, the riots. You, you guys can have your homes burned down, your businesses practically blown up, certainly looted. I don't care because I'm going to be protected. And I think whatever happens on the national stage, you are going to, by November the 4th, November the 5th, see some extremely interesting local and state results come down. Mm -hmm. uh, I wanted to talk with you about mail-in ballots, but I, I'll wait until you come back from vacay. Uh, but I want a more important issue to be broached uh, tonight, and that's Israel and the United Arab Emirates, uh, UAE. And apparently uh, Israel security is meeting with the UAE uh, uh, and discussing how they move forward in their peace agreement. So, Dave, how important is that peace agreement? And does Donald Trump deserve the Nobel Prize for ascertaining a peace that has not been accorded here since 1979? That's it's really interesting that you bring up that year, because certainly I thought about that. Yeah, um, does, Pre does President Trump deserve a Nobel Prize? I don't know. I do know, however, that the, the, the Peace Prize has been cheapened, certainly by the, the fact that others have won it who shouldn't have been Yasser Arafat, uh, please. Um, and Barack, course, Barack Obama? President Obama for yep. doing nothing. All right, mm -hmm. and I suppose yes, I suppose it's been cheapened so much. I, I suppose there's even an Overton window on the uh, the Nobel Peace Prize. So based on that, yes, I think he should get a Nobel Peace Prize. And of course, what he would do with the money would be, I'm sure, to donate it to some charity. Mm -hmm. Okay, but this was an importantly brokered peace agreement, and as has been pointed out, this has probably been years in the making, in the background, and yeah. it's good work on the part of the Trump State Department and the Trump administration. You need both of those things to work together in order to pull one of these things off, 
and they were able to do it. And I think the UAE is happy for the for now to partner with Israel in some things, particularly security, mm -hmm. because one of the things that a lot of people don't understand about the Middle East is that they're not a monolithic people in uh, in that most of them are Mohammedans. Okay, they all definitely have their own national loyalties and their own definite points of greed. And Iran has always had that point of greed. They've always been a grasping nation. I mean, that's why they've been at war with Iraq more than once, yep. actually. And is the UAE nervous about Iran being that close and that well-armed and, and uh, their regime being that aggressive? Sure they are. So it was in their interest, as well as Israel's interest, to get this peace accord done, so yes, I think I think President Trump deserves some credit for uh, for brokering it. Part of the deal, baby. Listen, um, my people will be getting with your people this week about my helicopter ride to your yacht. Um, Excellent. And I want to make certain this time that we have the larger room than we had last time. I hear that you renovated the yacht. Uh, so I'm looking forward to staying in the uh, room with the gold bathtub. Thank you very much. Oh, oh, you, you will definitely have that. You will definitely have one of the better cabins. Yes, we we had to refurbish last time because uh, you know I had I had a few rock bands that I was hosting. You know, like, <laughs> they came, uh, just had to just, uh, just you know how they do. You know how they do. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> time should be had by all. Um, I hope you like Lake Tahoe. I'm, I'm going to have uh, the yacht specially flown out there and just settled into Lake Tahoe. We won't be able to go very many places, but it'll be nice and pretty. So yeah, that's yeah. all. That's all that matters is that you're the I, big. As long as you are the biggest boat in the in the lake, that's all that matters. Nothing 500, else. Five hundred feet long, kid. I think that's going to be the biggest boat. In the lake. <laughs> it certainly will be. <laughs> it will be the biggest boat. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, my very good friend Dave Milner taking his vacay. He'll be back uh, for election kickoff, election 2020 kickoff on TV. I sure TV. Will, Ken, and uh, I wanted to say God bless you, Mary and Bonnie. God bless you too as well, and Mrs. Biggs and all of your viewers and listeners. God bless you guys. Ken's going to be by himself, but that's okay because by himself, Ken spins gold. <laughs> Thank you, man. I really appreciate you. Uh, God bless you. Love you, man. Enjoy your vacay. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, that's my very good friend, Dave Milner. Um, listen, I, it, Bonnie Williams just knows how to peek in. in oh, my God. And I only got two minutes. I can't say nothing. Let, let, me, try, let me try to do this, Bonnie. Um... Oh, now you say you're just showing me, but you ticked me off by by showing me. Uh, and apparently, Lynette Diamond Hardaway and Rochelle Sick Richardson, Silk Richardson of the Diamond and Silk Group, are claiming that Fox News pushed them out of their uh, place uh, on, on 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 the network after they shared or dared to ask questions that were also posed by white personalities in the conservative movement. That That's... Okay. Now, I, I don't have enough time. I don't have enough time, but uh, Raynard and I have been through this before with you all. Okay. There's not systemic racism, number one. There's not systemic racism, but number two... Diamond and Silk is a minstrel show. I, I, I don't... I'm not trying to de deflate them. I'm not trying to put them down. But they have to understand why they were picked at Fox. Fox didn't ask Raynard Teddy Bear Jackson to give commentary. It, it didn't. No. Didn't ask Ken McClinton. Didn't ask... No. They're not looking for that. They're looking for 
the jive turkeys that will keep you laughing. You know, hey, yeah, yeah, they so right. Ha, ha. They got a shtick. And they do that shtick pretty well. I, I admire them. I am proud of them. Good shtick. But understand, your shtick only goes so far. After you have gotten your laughs, and then you start asking serious questions, you no longer fit the narrative. Do you not think that Fox News is a leftist organization? Yes, it is. And Diamond and Silk fit their narrative. But when the minstrel show started getting serious, started really, because they'd gotten criticism from the likes of Kevin McClinton and Raynard Jackson and others who said, you have that platform and you look ridiculous. They need to take you seriously. All of a sudden, now your 15 minutes of fame has been cut to two. And now you got to sell a book. Of course, it'll be the number one bestseller on Fox News, right? Doubt it. I just want you all to know, I will never sacrifice my dignity in order to get the popularity that other people crave. It ain't worth it. I'd rather be the best in urban conservative news, talk, and movies uh, than to actually have to deal with the subject matters of getting along uh, with those who wish to create uh, a certain narrative that I would fit in at CPAC and stuff like that. No, uh-uh. I'm not giving up my dig. I'm not giving up the dignity. Uh-uh. You're going to take me seriously. You don't take me seriously. All the jokes, because I don't mind telling jokes, but there's a reason for why I tell the jokes. And you better love the person behind the reason rather than the reason in the narrative itself. So just saying that, you don't need to read the book. The 15 minutes of fame is over. Uh, or they'll be used again someday when they fit the narrative that's necessary. Um, but the bottom line is, Kimberly Clasic says you got to take me seriously. And she got raw with it. Stop doing the minstrel act and make people take you seriously. Comedy is one thing, but truth is another. Ladies and gentlemen, I know I am not going to receive great appreciation for what I just said, but God bless those who will criticize. But I do say this to you. I've enjoyed being in your presence. I thank God for you all. Uh, I look forward to Dave Milner coming back on our program in a couple of weeks. Uh, Mary Brockman, I love you dearly. Mrs. Biggs, love you. Executive producer Bonnie Williams, love you too. Thank you so much. Uh, if Miss Intern is watching and I don't know, love you too. Thank you so much for all that you do. For everybody who's tuned in around the world to watch the Exceptional Conservative Show, I thank you very much. We look forward to coming back to you tomorrow night, Friday night, 7 o'clock. We got a great movie, Anne Frank. Anne Frank, the movie, 7 o'clock. Uh, and then after that, it will be the Exceptional Conservative Show. Following the Exceptional Conservative Show, meet Dr. Christian at 11 o'clock. So there you go. You got a great lineup for tomorrow night. Come on back and see us. Start your day tomorrow at 10 o'clock with Pastor Greg Young uh, on Chosen Generation here at TECN TV. For all of us at TECN TV, we love you dearly. Thank you. And if you don't remember anything, I hope that you do remember this. God bless America. It is now time for America to bless God. See ya.